Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Contabo uh, broadcast. We are here today to celebrate an important milestone in the company, uh, which is us reaching uh, 100,000 customers. And we thought that at this point, uh, it would be a good idea to get to know each other a little bit better. And that's why we decided to organize this um, Ask Me Anything session with Thomas Noglik our CEO, uh, so that you could basically get to know Thomas and get to know Contabo and ask all the questions you always wanted to ask, but there was never a good opportunity to. So the way this is going to work today is that you can ask your questions uh, through the comments, both on YouTube or on Facebook. And then I will pick those questions and read them to Thomas so that um uh, thomas can answer them so let's give thomas a warm welcome hi thomas hi alex and also from my side thank you to all of our customers so an achievement of over 100,000 customers is great for the company this is the achievement of the contabo team uh but a great thanks to our employees and to you as a customer perfect um we already have some questions that were being emailed by people before uh beforehand so let me start with uh with the one coming from uh this poll so the uh first question i would like to ask you thomas is is it not contabo german not anymore this was the case in the past but over the couple of the last months um Contabo moved more and more towards to be a international company in, in all regards. So uh, we opened the data center in, in St. Louis last year. Uh, we hired we hired non-German speaking people. Um, so today we are an international company. You, Alex, is an ex is a, you are a good example. So you are not a German guy, you're a Polish guy living in Spain. So uh, Contabo is getting more and more international. The employees are getting more and more international. The customers are getting more and more international. And our entire business is more international. Less than 20% of our customers are only coming from Germany. And this is a, this is a good example why, um, a good proof why, why Contab is an international player. Uh, so 80% of our customers are spread all over the world. We have customers in more than 170 countries. Uh, so I'm proud to say, no, Contabo is not only German anymore, Contabo is international. Okay, thank you for that. So we have first question coming from our live viewers here. And the question is about torrent websites. Are they going to be accepted in Contabo? We we are not responsible uh, and we do not limit our uh, customers what they are doing on uh, on on their infrastructure. We are, we are infrastructure providers, so we, we are providing a virtual server and dedicated server and it's up to the customers what they want to what they want to run on the server so we do not limit uh except if it's not if it's not legal yeah for sure we have a abuse process in place where we take care of that um that we only that we only support legal content but in the end we don't care about uh what the customer is running on the server we support everything the customer uh wants to run on this infrastructure and we support by providing this infrastructure Okay. Um, and it's not a secret that a lot of our customers are actually reselling the service later on, uh, for example, as web hosting. So there is a question here, uh, whether actually starting web hosting businesses in 2021 is still a good idea or it's too late for that. What do you think? I think the, the web hosting market at all is big enough. Uh, it's growing. Um, we see a lot of, uh, we see a lot of uh, shared hosting providers still growing. Um, so I would invite all of our, our customers to be, um, to be reseller, to provide web services and, and web hosting, uh, for their customers. I don't think it's too late. It's still a growing market and, uh, it's still a huge demand on the market to provide web hosting. So I think it's a good idea also for, for customers to start now. It's never too late to start with web hosting. Okay. And here we have a question from. Uh, from Eddie, uh, which states the fact that we have received 
and investment from Oakley Capital in 2019. And the question is, is this, has this, this changed the way we, we do our business? Or is it going to change the way we do our business in the future? Contabo is owned by, by a group of, of hosting experts, including myself and pri a private equity fund, uh, so, so Oakley. Um, but I don't think this, this changed, uh, this changed oper our operation for, um, for the customers. Uh, maybe it changed a little bit for, for the better. So, um, as I, as I already mentioned, we, um, we are now more international due to the, to capabilities we we now have and due to the um due to the support we have and i think also for the future it will only beneficial for the customers uh that our strategy going forward is to grow to offer more services to offer more locations um and to offer uh, a better support or to continue at least our good support and and uh, hopefully also improve our support so i don't think that um that the owner, uh, the shareholder structure of Contabo um, is the reason why the customers are coming to us. The reason why the customers are coming to us is our great uh, support and our great products. Um, and we will continue to expand both of this. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, another question that I actually heard a lot also on the support recently. Can we use Contabo servers to mine cryptocurrencies? Yes, you can if you want to. As said, we are infrastructure provider, so we provide you compute power and different flavors. And if you want to use this compute power, compute power to do uh, crypto mining, then feel free to do, and we support this. Okay. And follow-up question from me: Do you think it actually makes sense? It's a general question if it makes sense to have a crypto mining or cryptocurrencies, uh, but I personally think this is this is a fact. Yeah. So I would say it would make sense. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Um, and then I, there is actually we have we're flooded with questions. So sorry, guys, it will take a, me a while to bring your question because we're uh, we have now almost 100 people watching us on both platforms. Uh, but let's take the uh, let's take one more question around uh, around reselling. So we have here a question. Uh, sorry, that's not the one. Uh, that was my next one. Uh, this is the one. Can we resell uh, Contabo VPSs using uh, API and using WHMS? Not at the moment. So there is no integration in WHMCS. Um, and we are, we are right now working on an API. Uh, there is already an API to, to order server at, uh, at Contabo. So you can use our API to, to order a VPS or a dedicated server. But right now, there is not an um, API to manage the server. Uh, this will come in future, so we are working on this. Um, so uh, I think we, we did the first thing uh, to help our resellers to be more automated. But there are more things to come. OK. Uh, then in between questions, I want just to bring one comment, because uh, I think you might enjoy it. Hello, Thomas. I need to mention that since you have become director of the company, quite a lot has changed for the better. Good job. Thanks a lot. Um, and we also receive uh, quite a lot of questions around locations. So, for example, here uh, we have a question, do you have uh, servers in Romania? But I've also seen the question about servers in Poland, servers in Singapore. What are the plans when it comes to locations? Our data center footprint currently is um, that we have servers in, in, in Germany. Yeah, uh, this uh, we have three data centers in Germany providing uh, the European market out of Germany, and we have our own data center in St. Louis, Missouri, yeah, where we uh, where we provide the service for for all uh, customers who want to have a server in uh, in the U.S. Um, as part of our internationalization strategy and as part of uh, um, of our strategy that Contabo is becoming more and more international, we we plan to open new data centers, and the next open the next data center uh, will be a data center in, in Singapore. Uh, this is planned to be launched beginning of Q2, um, and there are more data centers to come, as we already announced on our website. India is one data center we want to launch. We want also to uh, to expand our data center footprint in the US. So. Um, I think there will be more data centers in the future, but 
the the plan right now is to, to have uh, our Singaporean data center launched in in Q2, and and after that also a data center in um, in India. Okay. But to answer the question, sorry, but to answer the question, no. For the <laughs> moment, we have no we have no service in Romania or other kind. In, in, in Europe, we are only we are only in in Germany as a data, with our data centers. Okay, uh, that's that's I think that's helpful. Um, there is also on this uh, on this note, there is also a question about data center in South America or Chile in particular. What are our plans when it comes to this continent? Right now, we, we serve the South American market with our data center in in St. Louis. St. Louis is, let's say, in the middle of um, of the United States, so uh, it's not West Coast, it's not East Coast, so it's in the middle of uh, uh, of the United States, and um, we we try to tackle the South American market uh, with this data center. Um, but South America is a very interesting market, yeah. Not only Chile, but also countries like Brazil and then Argentina are countries where uh, we're hosting, where where infrastructure hosting is uh, pretty popular. So, without any 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 plans we have right now, um, I would say it's still interesting, and we are looking for new markets and new opportunities. Okay, and then there is a question about how we are policing what people are doing on our servers. So. Uh, the question is, what do we do with people who are basically using uh, software they should not be using on uh, on their in, on their instances? So, what is our policy around this? If you could walk us through this. Yes, um, it depends a little bit on what the customers are doing. We, we have clear uh, we have clear uh, terms and conditions where it's stated that all software has to be licensed, and we do not support unlicensed software. But the responsibility is at customer side yeah uh if we receive any any abuse report that uh, that a non-licensed software for example or um or content which is uh, which is, is fraud or abuse um is uh, is running on the server then we will act accordingly but uh, we do not we do not scan servers for uh, for license and so on again we are infrastructure providers so our service is to um to to deliver compute resources to our customers uh but we we try to stick to the law so in any case if we if we realize that there is uh that there is a unlicensed software uh we will take actions to get this down okay um so one more question from uh from questions that i've received before this session um uh, what has changed in contable since you have joined the company Things, a lot of things changed. First of all, um, we are getting more international, yeah, in 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 all aspects, employees, data centers. Um, we we are growing. Uh, we are expanding our product portfolio. And a good example for this is that we introduced virtual dedicated server, which is a which is the bridge between virtual private server and dedicated server. So virtual server with dedicated resources. There's a complete, complete new product line we introduced last summer, and this was pretty successful. Uh, we launched a new hardware platform uh, now based on AMD. Um, so we, we did a lot of things, and uh, the feedback we received from our customers is that this was uh, uh, for the better for, for the customers. So um, I think uh, that also in the future, we will see some changes. I mentioned our new data centers, and also from a product perspective, um, we are planning to to expand our product offering. So uh, stay tuned. What will come next? Okay. One more question from Editech. Why Contabo is called Contabo? Contabo is called Contabo. This is the abbreviation of uh, Content Aboard. Yeah, this is uh, this was the original idea behind the name Contabo. Okay. Um, then the question that is coming over and over again uh, is the question of setup fees. Do we have any plans to get rid of setup fees? 
It depends a little bit on uh, on the different products. Yeah. Um, uh, let's take dedicated server as an example. This is uh, uh, while on the one hand we are pretty automated, so our provisioning process is automated. We still have uh, we still have manual things to do because we we offer. Uh, we offer the opportunity to customize the server, so choose different disks, choose different configurations, and for this it's needed that the, the, that the technician uh, assembles and configures the server in a way how the customer has ordered the server. And for that's the reason why we why we take uh, setup fees. And also for for our virtual uh, products, we have um, let's take there as, a, as an example. Um, VDS, yeah, or virtual dedicated server. Also, with virtual dedicated server, you have the opportunity uh, to customize the server, so to add a dis additional disk. Um, so, for for most of our for most of our products, there is some customization, and for this customization, we need people, and that's the reason why we why we charge setup fees. Okay. Um, then there is one more. There is more. There is another question. Um, about high capacity storage servers. What are our plans when it comes to storage products in Contabo? There, there are two plans. First of all, um, as I said, we, we, we offer a lot of configurations uh, for our dedicated server, for example. Yeah, so we, we will add on continuous basis um, additional disks uh, so that we can have, that the customer can order um, a server uh, with a bunch of disks uh, with a huge capacity. This is the thing we, we do on, in the dedicated space. But at the same time, as I as I mentioned, um, we are also planning to expand our product portfolio. Right now, you our core competency is to provide compute resources. Yeah, um, but we also want to enter, or we also want to 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 add to our product portfolio products around storage. Yeah, um, and and later on also products around network. So um, we are right. In right now in a, in a planning phase to to expand our product portfolio towards storage okay perfect uh, i think we have one more interesting question around api as well uh let me just find it on the list because the questions are coming so quickly that i'm not able to get through all of them in real time i think it's over here um can we expect more robust api and cloud provisioning Yes, you can expect that. This is the, the clear answer. Yes, we are working on this. Um, I can't announce uh, a release date, uh, but don't be surprised if we will release this this year. So um, the first step was to uh, to release our API to order servers. Um, and the next step is to to automate all around provisioning, and we are we are working already on this. So um, I'm pretty sure that that we will have there a good offering in a couple of the next months. Okay. In uh, in the uh, next in the meantime, let me put just this. This is not a question, but this is a statement from someone who over the last 15 years have tried various hosting servers and from all the top providers around the world and found that Contabo is a perfect balance of quality and price. So thank you very much for uh, for this statement. Um, yeah. And let's uh, let's go forward with some more questions. So here we have a question of how is this possible that you have such low prices? I didn't find any lower prices for VPS. There are several reasons why we are able um, to deliver our products uh, at this price level. First of all, we are we are a small company, we are an agile company, yeah, so uh, we do not have a lot of uh, of overhead, administrative overhead. Second, uh, we have a very very standardized platform. So we are using our hardware for dedicated for virtual dedicated and for virtual private servers. So we are completely standardized and 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 we are also highly automated. Then um, we are known in the market to be good in negotiation with our suppliers in terms of hardware prices, power uplinks, all these things. And our our philosophy is to deliver the best price performance ratio in the market. So it's it's part of our DNA to to deliver good service for a recent price. Uh, and the entire organization um, is 
is completely focused uh, on the customer. So to, to give you to give you uh, some numbers, 80% of our employees are working every day in direct contact with customers. So are in direct contact every day with with customers. And and this is a good this is a, is a good a good evidence why we we are lean and clean in terms of organization and uh, focusing on our customers and providing the best service for the best price. Okay. Uh, we have one more question here from Joshua, who is asking, how are we dealing with DMCA requests for dedicated server and VDS? Is this any different than how we do it with VPS, for example? No, there is not not really a difference how we how we deal uh, how we deal with uh, with this request. Um, yes, we, we we have a we have a abuse process uh, in place. Yeah, but we must say that that we that we realize uh, depending on the request, we have some requests which are pretty good documented. Yeah, where we have where we have enough information to to act on this. Uh, on the other hand, we also receive. Uh, thousands of uh, of requests every day where the documentation it is not sufficient enough to to act on this. So depending on uh, depending on the level of detail we receive, we we act on this. Um, but we need we need some proof. We need some certainty that uh, that there is really uh, abuse going on. Okay, and then we have a question from Goran. Uh, who asks if there is any chance we'll upgrade DNS zone management in mycontabo.com or actually the entire dashboard because he finds it kind of clumsy. Yes, we, we also uh, we launched a new website uh, a few weeks ago. So on uh, I think it was the 12th of uh, January, we launched our new website and uh, we listen to our customers. We talk a lot to our customers and we receive pretty good feedback around the relaunch of our website. Uh, but at the same time, we receive feedback that our customer portal should be the next thing we we should touch on, um, and we we agree to that. We we want to deliver, or we want to uh, we want to update also our customer portal. Uh, this is also one of the projects we are we are working on. It will take, unfortunately, some time. Yeah. Um, because quality is also very, very important for us uh, to deliver also a customer portal, which works well for the customers. Um, but we are working on, on releasing a new one, yeah. Okay, and Peter asks, why don't we sell game servers anymore? Or is it actually true that we don't sell game servers anymore? <laughs> We sell infrastructure, yeah. Um, and if the customer wants to run a game server uh, on the infrastructure, this is more than possible, yeah. And we have customers who are running game servers, so um, we we do not offer specific software for that. Um, but our platform um, is a good platform to run game server on this. And we have also bigger customers who are using our platform as a reseller of of game hosting. Um, so I would say feel free to use our server. Uh, for game for gaming, uh, but we do not offer any specific software for that anymore. Okay, and then there is a question: If we have any plans to introduce macOS images as the list of supported OSs for VPS? No, there are no plans. Quite frankly, there are no plans to to support macOS right now. Okay, um, and then. Uh, the other question that I have for you, Thomas, is uh, how uh, do you actually manage to maintain German quality in overseas data centers that Contabo have? This is pretty easy. We hired a German guy in the U.S. Uh, who is leading our operations in uh, in in uh, the U.S. Um, so I think um, we, we are in, the, in a good position that we we are able um, to. Uh, to, to have someone in charge there who uh, who has a mixture uh, of both cultures, so someone who who knows what our um, what our requirements in terms of quality is, and uh, on the other hand, also the, the local philosophy. Um, and um, this guy is is, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, um, organizing our team there. Uh, um, so. The the secret behind this is uh, that we that we try to get also people um, who are used to to German mindset to German quality uh, and in St Louis uh, 
Um, we have someone who who's German and is running the operation there, but at the same time living now for 15 years in the, in the States. Okay. And we have a question um, about our snapshot feature and the possibility to, to basically expand it and uh, to use it um, for more purposes. What are our plans regarding that? Or can you reveal anything around this? Uh, our snapshot snapshot feature um, is just a, is there to, to to give the customers some some basic uh, backup functionalities. Yeah, um, but part of our product roadmap is also to deliver more professional uh, applications to uh, the customers. Um, so uh, looking forward, uh, we will have also probably some uh, some commercial backup solutions in place which a customer can use to. Um, to, to have more security with the data. Because the uh, security or the, the backup is then a responsibility of the customer. Therefore, we want to provide more tools uh, to support the customers to be on the safe side. OK. And there is a question uh, from one user who has noticed that he sees more and more SSH brute force attacks on his machines since September. Uh, have we noticed something like this happening across Comtabo or it's just an unlucky user? We we see at Contabo that the amount of, of attacks is increasing, but this is not only at Contabo the case, yeah. Uh, so we see it in the entire internet that the amount of, of, of DDoS attacks, of, of brute force attacks and, and all these things is increasing. And it's it's now reaching a limit where our solution we have in place um has also uh, has also his limits yeah um so we are now elaborating on on additional protections for our customers um this is something we are working we are working right now on and uh, hopefully we will have an, an uh, in the next months uh, a solution there for the customers because the, the current solution we have in place uh is good but it's somewhat limited and we see that the that the the amount of ad attacks and and the size of their attacks is uh, is growing and growing. Um, therefore, we have to improve their our solution. I see. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the topic that is on everyone's mind. So about COVID nineteen. Uh, did COVID nineteen affected? Did it affect Contabo business? For sure, COVID-19 affected our business in, in, in different regards. Um, if I take, for example, our, our employees, yeah, um, um, today I, most of our employees are working from, from home. And this was not the case before, uh, before COVID. Uh, as you all know, we, we are, uh, we are a German company, very, uh, very, uh, centralized in, in, um, in Munich and, and in Nuremberg. So our business before COVID was very, um, very office oriented. And now, um, most of our employees are working from home and with the internet, internationalization, um, we see that this is, this is working pretty well. Um, so the way how we interact, the way how we collaborate with, with our staff changed. Uh, but at the same time, um, we saw that the demand for our services was also growing, um, maybe even faster growing uh, than in the past. Uh, so the digitalization of uh, different economies, of different companies, um, resulted in, in, in a higher demand for, for hosting at all, not only at, at Contabo, for hosting at all. Um, therefore, yes, we see an impact on the business. Um, but from my perspective, we deal good with the situation, also good for our customers. And uh, I hope that we will uh, get out of the situation pretty soon. OK. And here is more of a customer demand than a question, but let me turn that into a question for you. Uh, do we have any plans regarding in implementing the support ticketing system without within control panel or to introduce a live chat? It's a little bit too early to announce details, but um, this is on our radar um, and uh, we know the demand uh, regarding live chat and these functions uh, and we are thinking of implementing these things. But as I said, it's, it's a little bit too early to announce. Okay. And different question then. Do you have any personal projects or products running on Contabo? 
and do you code yourself? <laughs> Both, yes. Um, I have personal projects on uh, on Contabo, and uh, yes, I'm really coding things. Uh, I started my career in a, in a software development, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm pretty sticky uh, to writing code. Um, and, and nowadays, it's more a hobby than a business, but uh, um, I'm still writing code, yes. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Nathaniel is asking about our policy on use, on posting information on contabostatus.com in case there are incidents. So could you uh, give our customers a look on like how we actually deal with uh, with incidents and informing everyone about what's happening? Yeah, we, we have two different strategies. It depends a little bit on the scale of uh, of the incident. Yeah, if it's, uh, let's say, maybe a host system, so uh, a couple of customers are infected, then our strategy is to inform them directly via email. Um, but we also, as every company, have uh, um, some uh, some incidents which, for example, hit all customers in a data center or in a, uh, in, a, in a rec row or, or things like this. And for this, we, we have our status page where we, where we announce things, where we try to update and we try to keep the, the customers updated. Um, so we have two different channels. Depending on the scale, one is uh, to do it via, via our ticket system and email. And the other one is our status page on, at Contabo where, uh, where we only announce bigger incidents. Okay. Um, there is also a request for you to sync something, uh, but uh, let's uh, for real. I don't want to hear that. Uh, but yeah, maybe let's not let's not go that far. Before I follow up with more questions, I just want to let you guys know that we're going to be online for five more minutes. So if you have any more questions that you would like to ask, now this is the right moment. Um, and the next one that I have, Thomas, for you is this time around GPU enabled instances. Do we have any plans mm -hmm. around this? This is a very interesting question. Uh, not only interesting, this is also a topic which is very interesting for us because I, I personally think that, that part of the part of the uh, hosting industry will move to to GPU compute service because this is this will be for for some use cases the, the next step. Yeah. Um, and also for us as Contabo this is interesting but during our session now, I already announced a lot of things we are right now working on. Um, and also we as a small company have to pick our battles. Yeah. So we can't do everything at the same time. In general, this is very interesting for us and, and, uh, uh, we have an eye on this, but we can't do everything at the same moment. Um, so it's not on our short term list. Okay. Perfect. Um, then there is, uh... There is also a question about support for uh, paid Linux flavors coming from Mohammad. Um, do we have any plans around more uh, more uh, OSs being supported? Um, I think the the amount of or OSs we already offering is is huge. Uh, so we support a lot of, of operating systems um, comparing to, uh, to to other people in the market. Um, but we are always in. in I think the, the last announcement was uh, two months ago where we announced a, a new OS version. Um, so we are we're continuously working on um, on, on new OSs. Um, but this is not not focused to be quite uh, to be quite open, yeah. Um, and all the all the all the paid uh, distributions of Linux, um, we offer the community version there. And from our perspective, uh, this is uh, this is enough. Uh, this would be enough to to tackle the demands of uh, of the customers. Okay, uh, and the. Uh... Sorry, the other question uh, that I have for you is: uh, I think we've already we've already spoken about a lot of things that we are thinking of or we're working on. Uh, but if you were to point out like the one next big thing that is coming for Contabo, is there anything you can reveal for us today? Um, yeah, the question of what is the one next thing? I think there are a lot of things uh, coming over the next weeks and months. Um, but maybe a point we, we, we didn't touch today, um, and we will launch next week, um, is a new currency. So we, we want to offer our products also in US dollars, 
which is heavily requested by our customers. Right now, you only can you only can um, order our service, uh, services uh, by paying in euros. And uh, next week, we will launch also our products or our product offering. Um, in US dollars. Um, so this this is the next big thing. Next means next week. Okay. And last but not least, the question comes uh, from Joshua. Who designed this new logo for Contable? This was uh, this was an employee of us, yeah. So we have a very tiny market department, but we have a marketing department. So we do not spend in a lot of money in marketing. Uh, we are more focused on our quality and products and on on spending uh, too much money on marketing. Um, but uh, we have we have some people um, who work in our marketing department. One of our colleagues created the logo. A lot of logos, and and this was the logo you see right now was. Uh, What's the best one we, we, we chose? Perfect. Uh, Thomas, thank you very much for, uh, for your time today. Uh, it was awesome to, uh, to be able to be in between our customers and you and bring the, uh, the questions. Um, and I hope this, uh, this helped all of you to, to get a better outlook of like, like how real people in Contabo look like and what are our plans and what, where we want to move forward. And thank you very much for being here. And thank you very much for being our customers, right? Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure.